hi welcome to the smiling tabby welcome back if you've been to my channel before welcome to you if you're new and today i'm sharing a video it's a little bit different i wanted to take a walk down memory lane with this book that i have of all tickets mostly concerts that i've been to over the years but also some sporting events and other attractions so i thought it would be fun to take a look and kind of you know relive the the olden days <laughs> and look at the old prices and also I can tell you more about this book at the end. So let's get into it. Hope I can get all this in frame. So the very first ticket here is, actually it was my dad's. So this is dated October 1st, 1966. It's a Boston College football game. He went to BC and there's no price on this. He was a student. And then the next ticket is from 1985, it looks like. It's a little hard to see because there's a crease here. It's a Celtics versus Knicks, um, $13 at the Boston Garden. That was my first um, pro basketball game I went to. And then this is a uh, Philadelphia Phillies baseball um, game ticket, Phillies versus Cincinnati Reds. It was $7.50 in 1986. This is Exposé. They were a um, band of girl singers in the 80s. This was my very first concert. So 1988, 1950 is what it cost. $19.50. It says no refunds, no exchanges. And this is another show I went to. It was in 89, Howard Jones. So this show was at... Um, an amusement park called Lake Compounds. They used to have a lot of concerts there and they actually don't have concerts there anymore, but it is the oldest amusement park in the country. So this ticket was $3. That doesn't seem right. Maybe that was a parking voucher. I'm not sure. And then the one underneath it also from oh no, 1990. Billy Joel. I saw Billy Joel and the price on that $22.50 okay then um I actually Crosby Stills and Nash they are one of my favorite bands I love older music so anything from like the 60s and 70s and I saw them a few times so this happened to be a ticket from 1990 it looks like $20.50 but then it looks like $23 so let's just say $23 because of the fees but it'll be interesting to see how the fees have gone up over the years and the tickets we're going to be looking at. Then I also saw Sinead O'Connor. I barely remember that. August 1990. This doesn't look like a complete ticket because it only says $2.50. So I think it was a parking thing. Then I saw Joan Baez and the Indigo Girls in New Hampshire. I remember the show. Yeah, it was outside. It was 1990. It's right before I left for college. And then this is a ticket for a show at, uh, it's a show called A Few Good Men. A play in 1992, it looks like. I can't. Price is $34 and something. Okay. And then here's Crosby, Stills, Nash again in 92 uh, out in Massachusetts, Great Woods. Well, it's not called that anymore. And that was $14.50. We had lawn seats. And then uh, this is one of my treasured. So I, I had two other tickets uh, to Grateful Dead shows. One was 89, March 89, I think. I don't know. I don't have, this is the only one I have. So this is Grateful Dead and Sting open for them at Giant Stadium, June 6, 1993. It was 20, it looks like 28.50. So a little story. My, I went with some friends. It was during the summer. I was a college student, but I was home on, you know, summer break. So I went with some of my friends that I knew from home and I had always a college friend of mine. She and I, we tried to go to shows a few, get tickets a few times to shows and we could never do it. So while me and my uh, friends from home were out in the parking lot, you know, as people do before the show, I see her walk by with a bunch of other college friends and I couldn't believe it. So she and everybody she was with, they did not have tickets. So they were just there walking around looking to buy tickets from other people. So I said, oh, I'll walk around with you and spend some time with you. So I did that. And then I had to go back to my, the friends that I came with. So I had to go into the show. So I, I don't, you know, I said, I don't know if she's going to get tickets or not. 
And then when I finally get in to Giant Stadium, which is huge, you know, I don't know how many people it held uh, at that point, but I mean, it's massive. So we get in there, we get our seats, and like three rows ahead of me is my college friend and the people from college that she was with. I couldn't believe it. Out of all the seats, first of all, she was able to get tickets. They were all able to get tickets together, and then they sat, you know, right near me. So it was really, it was really cool. Yeah. And then actually found out later on that my boyfriend now was actually at that show. And a few shows in here too. <laughs> So Sting, I saw Sting in 96 he, for $33. Also saw Cats at the Winter Garden Theater in 95, $65. This is uh, a boarding pass for an aerial tramway, that, a tram ride that I took in Palm Springs, California in the 90s. I just thought that was kind of neat to put on that on there, boarding pass. And then I saw The Counting Crows, 1997. It was like the height of their popularity. $22.50, that's not bad, lawn seats. And then The Samples, I saw The Samples and they're a really fun band from the 90s. Oh, I love them. They, the lead singer I think is originally from Connecticut, then moved to Vermont, then Colorado. So I think they got started out in Colorado and it looks like these tickets were comped. So we didn't have to pay for those. And this, oh, I've been to a bunch of fish shows. I only really have this one ticket because the rest of them were um, either I lost them or they were more recent shows where you don't really get a physical ticket. So this was a show up in Maine in August 16th and 17th, 1997 in Limestone, Maine. And it was at the Loring Air Force Base. So a massive show. I should look up how many people were there. I mean, just insane how many people were there. And I'd already been in Maine and we decided like last minute, let's, let's turn around. Let's go further north. Let's go up to fish. So we did. And the tour was called The Great Went. And this, I did not get this at the show. I just found this online not too long ago because I was thinking about the show. And this was kind of the graphic for their posters. So I, mean, I don't have anything from the show other than that. And this from later on. But yeah, it was great. I mean, the, oh my gosh, the town was like... I mean, if you want to call it a town, taken over by, you know, all these people. And then the next day I went to, I went to McDonald's in town to get breakfast. And there were these adorable, like older gentlemen from Maine. And they just thought it was amazing that so many people were up there. They were just sitting around watching everybody. They were like, what's going on? What is all this? And they were, I sat down with them and we chatted. It was, it was nice. They told me all about how they used to get out of school. Um, they wouldn't have to go to school because the, um, the school let them miss school if because they had to pick potatoes. Uh, James Taylor, uh, I saw him in 98, $20. I think this show, yeah, it's gotta be. My, my best friend and some other friends from college, we went to this show and it was outside, lawn seats, and we got, it rained so hard and we got soaked. I mean, I, I think I got more soaked at this show than when I take a shower. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh my gosh. And then let's see, Phantom of the Opera. My, I think, I, I don't think, I think my parents gave me this. 5650 for that show. Uh, also Crosby, Stills and Nash, but this is Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. So with Neil Young, that's the only show I saw with Neil Young. This was in 2000. It was called the CSN Y2K show and it was about $48, $49. Then I saw Stevie Nicks. I really love Stevie Nicks. Excuse me, in Fleetwood Mac. So 01, Stevie Nicks, $72.50, getting up there. Dave Matthews Band. Oh my gosh, General Seeds Lawn, $35, 2001. Yeah, I mean, those shows were fun, but oh my gosh. Like, crazy people, especially on the lawn. Just just so many people. I mean, it's wonderful. They're partying, but I mean, it's just like too much. And then you pay like $10 for a beer, and then somebody hit knocks into you, and you end up spilling it. So yeah, I guess it was fun when I was younger. Harlem Globetrotters. I love Harlem Globetrotters. So this is from 2002. They are the, the best. It's it's so fun to go to a game. If you ever get a chance, go. I mean, it's just, you will like laugh and smile the whole time. 24.50, it looks like for that in 2002. 
uh, Fleetwood Mac, here we are, Fleetwood Mac in 2003. And I paid a lot for these, $125 plus another $12 fee, but it looks like I had pretty good seats, lower section in the 100s. And then Cirque du Soleil show in 2003. Uh, another Fleetwood Mac show, this was, you know, like one, 160, that's a lot, that's a lot of money. Now, then, 2003 Fleetwood Mac. I love Fleetwood Mac. And here's another Fleetwood Mac. And this is, um, let's see, 2004. So this is like, you know, my son was born in the fall of 04. So I was pregnant with him. That was his first show then, I guess. And that was a long C. I don't know how much that was. Oh, $25. And then this is Jason Mraz. I saw him in at the Orpheum Theater in Boston in 2008. I think it was $35 with my family, my sister, and my brother. And then Jim Gaffigan, he's a comedian. This is the only comedy show I've ever been to. So this was 2009, took my brother with me, 40 bucks. Okay, Pearl Jam. <laughs> Pearl Jam was great. I saw Pearl Jam with my brother, my sister, and my brother-in-law, and our seats, we were like so far away. We, I think we had, were in the last row at the very top. So like literally the back of our heads were against the back wall of the Coliseum. But it was still an amazing show. Like, you, I did not feel that we were that far away because the sound was amazing. So $66 plus $13 in fees. Don't forget those fees. I like when they call them convenience fees. Um, they're not convenient for me. Boston Duck Tours. These, if you ever go to Boston, these are like amphibious vehicles. They're usually bright yellow. So they, they take you for a tour around Boston. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to shake that. And then they also um, can go in the water. So we did that new cruise around in the water. Uh, 2010. This is a show I saw with my dad, uh, stepdad and my brother, David Crosby and Graham Nash. That was a nice show. Just the two of them in 2011. 80 bucks. Ray LaMontagne. I also really like him. He's a uh, really great songwriter. 2011, $52. Here's some more Harlem Globetrotters. I think this show, I took my son and his one of his friends. And um, his friend's parents came too. We all went together. It was nice. Here's the circus. I took my son to the circus. Yeah, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey. I know the circus is no more... Um, which is a good thing because those animals did not ask to entertain us humans. And it's just, you know, it's not right. So, but I did take him to the circus and he had a great time and he got this beautiful <laughs> white stuffed white, like tiger <laughs> stuffed animal that he, I think he still has, but you know, I think it's in the closet. Uh, Portland Sea Dogs and New Britain Rock Cats. This is like a baseball farm team. Uh, 2013. Here's some more Harlem Globetrotters. That, I think we might have gone with my parents to that. And then <laughs> tickets in 2014 to see the Lego movie. That's kind of fun. And did I skip a page? No. Okay, let's see. Who is this? Oh, Ray LaMontagne again. Um, let's see. What year was this? 2014. So... Let's see, $70. Roger Williams Park Zoo is in Rhode Island. Took my son there with my brother and that was really fun. This little ticket right here, this is from a Renaissance fair. So it's called King Richard's Fair and it's in Massachusetts. It's Plymouth or Carver. I think they're right near each other. It's really fun. Everybody dresses up. There's jousting. There's like a king and queen that walk around. But it's really expensive. Sometimes you can get a Groupon to get, you know, a discounted rate to get into the fair. But then everything else is crazy expensive, the food and drink. Here's Fleetwood Mac again. This is the last time I saw them. I saw them with my sister. This was an expensive ticket, $180 um, in 2014. But I do love them. And, you know, I spent a lot of money on tickets over the years. And I wouldn't take it back because I love live music. And... I went to a lot more shows than there's tickets here for because, like I said, tickets are now on your phone. So this is a, a Chicago ticket. I saw Chicago in 2015. They were really good. And then New England Aquarium in Boston. Went there with my family. This is a ticket for the Yankees versus Tampa Bay Rays. We went 
uh, my sister coordinated this whole thing for my brother-in-law. It was, so her husband's birthday and his 30th and she um, coordinated this whole thing. She took the whole family to the Jim Beam suite at Yankee Stadium and to celebrate his birthday. And then she was able to get like a happy birthday message to him on the Jumbotron. I was calling it Ticketron in my mind. I'm like, that's not right. Ticketron, Jumbotron. Got tickets on my head, on my brain. This is just a raffle of a receipt from a raffle prize entry that I had. This is a ticket to a movie Deadpool. And then Brit Floyd is a tribute band for Pink Floyd. They're very good. And also Aussie Pink Floyd. So Australian Pink Floyd and Brit, Brit Floyd. Um, I've seen them both a, a number of times and they're both really good. Let's get the page now. Uh, let's see, Mystic Aquarium is fun. And then Mo is a jam band. They're really fun. Saw them a few times, just happened to have one ticket. Here's another ticket for Britt Floyd. Here's a ticket for Neil Diamond. Yeah, these tickets were expensive too. Like over a hundred bucks, but that was, I think the last time he toured. And then this is from like a local, This is from a local, like a bluegrass festival. Not not really local, but it's like a bluegrass festival. And then Tadashi Trucks, they're very good. Saw them in 2017. Aussie Pink Floyd again. The samples again. This was in 2017. Standing room only, 48 bucks. And then Roger Waters, he of Pink Floyd. He That show is excellent. I really enjoyed that show a lot. Um, 2017. This is just a stub from taking the chair uh, chairlift up Mount Snow during a like an Oktoberfest beer festival they had there in Vermont. This is another Jam Brand ticket. This is or stub from an e ticket. Umphreys McGee and they were at the Capitol Theater in Port Chester, which is like a really beautiful theater and one of the most favorite places that Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead ever played because they loved the acoustics there. So there's a lot of history in that theater. And then they have a bar downstairs that's called Garcia's and they have a lot of Jerry Garcia like memorabilia and stuff. It's it's a pretty special place. And Dark Star Orchestra is a tribute band to Grateful Dead, they recreate shows. So they'll, they'll pick a date, you know, they'll pick, you know, July 17th, 1975, and they'll play every song that the Grateful Dead played at that show. And this is just a ticket from uh, an event, like a ski club event, like a dinner dance thing. Dead and Company. So the members of Grateful Dead, obviously, um, they needed a new, uh, somebody to sing and play guitar as well. So John Mayer, uh, does that with them and they're, they're really good They're I, it's, it's, you know, it's not the same, but it's, I think it's great. Mo, uh, is another fun. Oh, I saw Mo already. Sorry. Here's Mo again. And then Kung Fu, they're a fun band. So Kung Fu played at this place called Daryl's House. And it's really nice. It's actually owned by Daryl Hall of Hall and & Oates. And here's another Dead & Company show uh, ticket stub. I've seen them um, three times, I think, so far. Garcia Project. Garcia Project, I actually didn't have to pay for these tickets. I won them. Garcia Project is really fun. They do like what Dark Star Orchestra does, they recreate shows from the Jerry Garcia band. So Jerry Garcia had his own band on the side. So they do shows from Jerry Garcia band. Twiddle is a really great band too. I'm saying that about everybody. Really great band, really great band. Yeah, Twiddle, they got their start at uh, college up in Vermont and I've seen them a bunch of times. Here's another Aussie Pink Floyd stub. I'm, I'm not really saying that do you really care about the prices? Looks like it was 25 plus 10, so $35 in 2018. So we're getting towards the end. Twiddle again in 2018. This was around Thanksgiving. They usually do a show at the Capitol Theater around that time. And then I went to Moscow Ballet's Great Russian Nutcracker with my mom in 20, 
2018. And then I went to Brian Wilson concert with my dad and the rest of the family because my dad really likes the beach, my stepdad really likes the beach boys. And so we all did that together as a family. This is a stub from Bob Weir of the Grateful Dead, but Bob, or Dead and Company, Bob Weir and Wolf Brothers. So that's his other side band that he does. Joe Russo's Almost Dead. Sorry, this is so like focused on the Grateful Dead and, and tribute bands, but. So Joe Russo's Almost Dead, otherwise known as J-Rad, they, they also are, I don't know if I'd call them a tribute band for the Grateful Dead, but they put their own spin on Dead songs, and they're pretty good. They're really jammy. And Dead & Company, again, this is the last Dead & Company show I saw, June 22nd, 2019. We know there were no shows in 2020. This is just a stub from a raffle from that same fair, and... This is a tribute band called Rumors, the Ultimate Fleetwood Mac tribute that I saw. And they were very good. Let's see if I can pull this out. Um, you know, because I, I obviously have seen Fleetwood Mac a number of times. And they really fit the bill. Like, they looked and sounded a lot like the, the real band. So, like, celebrate the rock and roll legacy of Fleetwood Mac. And that is it. So the very last show I saw before everything happened in 2020 was Dark Star Orchestra, but I don't have a sub for them. So I just thought it would be fun to take a look through here. So this, um, I added, I ordered extra pages for this book, so it did not come with all these. But yeah, there's plenty of room. You can write notes on here. So let me show you the book itself, if you're interested. It has this little pocket back here little pocket back here and then this is the information it says Peter Popper Press so Popper like P-A-U P-E-R Peter Popper Press just the ticket ticket stub organizer it comes with 20 archival plastic pages which can hold up to 80 tickets so that's how how it originally comes it looks like it suggested retail price was $15.99 so I hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a like and I really uh, appreciate you sticking around and taking a walk through memory lane with me. Thanks. Bye.